Merry Christmas. There's something lovely about gathering in a sanctuary on Christmas morning, something we do about once every seven years. But the merriest of Christmas to you, after last night, the holiest of nights, and I feel like with the um, straw and the poinsettia leaves, it looks like there was some sort of a party here last night, (laughs) which there was. It was a fabulous celebration. Friends, come on down. Let's gather close together. I think it's going to be a cozy, small group. Let's begin together. We're going to, um, I think we'll remain seated, but if you're so moved and you want to stand to sing, we'll, let, we'll, just, we'll do that too. How about that? As the Spirit um, leads you, we'll begin with all the songs today, all the carols. We'll sing all the verses. And we'll begin with um, Hark the Herald Angels Sing. Someone can call out the page number if you find it first. 31.
to be with us and for us no matter what life serves us. In gratitude, we come to this place, we gather, we light candles, we sing songs, because this gift of all gifts, this Prince of Peace, Light of the World, King of Kings, Mighty Counselor, known by so many names to us, is an ever-present source of love and light and hope. Be with us this day as we gladden our hearts with this news and follow wherever the love of Christ leads us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Does anyone have, we'll take some hymn suggestions for a few minutes. Does anyone have a carol that they want to sing? If you'll call out the title, Susan is at the organ, ready to receive your request. How about joy to the world? How about joy to the world? Do we know? 40. page 29 Susan go tell it on the mountain
And, but, and what, page 23. And then, John, would it be all right after we sing Angels We Have Heard on High, could you just tickle the ivories for us in whatever way um, feels Christmassy to you? And you'll, you can just surprise us with what that will be. I gave you a little, little heads up as we sing Angels We've Heard on High, page 23.
Amen. So I often remember the line in Scripture, Lord, I believe. Do you remember the rest? Help my unbelief. How often our belief comes in spurts or in moments instead of a steady belief. I don't know about you, I find that to be true. And sometimes when you're totally caught up in something else, it's when the moment of the truth of Christ, when the truth of Christ dawns upon you, it's like you're hearing it sometimes for the first time. Um, I've often quoted Frederick Beekner. I'm going to read just a few sentences of what he wrote thinking of, and thinking about Christmas. Um, Frederick Beekner was an unbeliever and in his young adult life had some experiences that he couldn't make sense of that very much changed the trajectory of his life. And he was a teacher at the Lawrenceville School in Lawrenceville, New Jersey, and went on and wrote, just wrote from his heart and what he understood and went on and taught at Union Theological Seminary in New York City and wrote many, many books. Um, he very recently passed away with advanced dementia in his late 90s. Um, but a lot of his writing, it's interesting, it's, a lot of his writing has become popular again. And as he described his own writing, he always, he wrote about it as, it's too religious. What he writes about is too religious for secular people. And it's way too secular for religious people. So he didn't fit. He wasn't considered a great theologian by other theologians. Um, but it's interesting now, I think, as we're into a little more, it, it's interesting that he's popular again now, that people listen to his writing. So, so here are these words. He says, for a moment or two, the darkness of disenchantment, cynicism, doubt, draw back at least a little, and all the usual worldly witcheries lose something of their power to charm. Maybe we cannot manage to believe with all our hearts, but as long as the moments last, we can believe that this is, of all things, the thing most worth believing. So I'm wondering if anyone would like to share, if you've had any of those moments during so far, because we're still in the Christmas season, if you, recently have you had any of those moments when it, sometimes they call it, it pierces the veil between light and darkness, those moments where you absolutely believe. Or you know, another way to say it is, you know there is more than what you can see. Janice and I attend, well, Janice worked, seven or eight preschool Christmas concerts. And um, at every one, I spoke to the, the preschool parents and introduced myself and welcomed them to attend any services. And it was the last one. I went to the back. I sat in one of the white rocking chairs, and I just was listening to Janice do her thing or Mrs. Stork do her thing with the children that were lined up on the stage. And there was one. Um, I didn't know if he was a father or a grandfather. I don't know. I couldn't tell by his age. But he was moving very quickly from that side of the sanctuary, hustling to get to this side of the sanctuary to get the best picture of the preschooler that he knew and loved. And as he was making his way, he 
cut across the rocking chairs, and I saw him coming. It was a chilly day. He was wearing shorts and a T-shirt, big barrel-chested guy with a zippered sweatshirt, sleeve tattoos down both arms, and um, tattoos all over the exposed part of his legs between the shorts and the socks, okay? Um, not that there's anything wrong with a tattoo, but he didn't look like, he didn't look like a lot of the other dads. And as he was moving in the back, and he got close to me and he said, excuse me, as he's on his way to hurry and get the picture, we caught each other's eyes, and he was crying. He had tears coming down his cheeks. And he looked at me and he said, is this the most beautiful? Is there anything better than this, than these children singing? Oh, and then he went on his way. And I loved that, right? When he was approaching, it totally took me by surprise. Sometimes when we have one of those moments, he was having one, and as he shared it, it then became a moment for me. Anyone else? Ann. I want to stand up and turn around. Would you feel comfortable doing that? And she wasn't an angel. No, she wasn't. She was some animal. Yeah. She was some animal acting like an angel. And I thought, well, that's kind of funny. A donkey angel. Yeah. Like, right? How limited our thinking is. Yeah. Anyone else? A tiny moment. Sometimes these moments that pierce the veil between light and darkness, heaven and earth, Sometimes they're very ordinary. You almost say, is that, really, is that really what that was? You almost question. But I think it's really sometimes just that simple. Frank. They sound like almost the same guy, except it's my mom's nurse's aide at her assisted living. So I'm there with my mom, and the fellow comes in, sort of know him, and he said, oh, my life's not going well. He owns a house with his wife. In the house lives his dad, his wife, his wife's son, the biological father of his wife's son, and he discovered by following his wife that she's cheating on him. She has a girlfriend somewhere. And he's thinking about getting a divorce. He doesn't know what to do. So I'm hoping my mom doesn't mention that I'm a lawyer. Maybe, <laughs> right? We can give him some advice or something. So I'm thinking, what can I say to him other than maybe I could offer to pray for him? So I'm sitting there waiting for an opening. And he said, uh, I'm sorry to burden you. Will you just pray for me? And I thought, I don't know. It just touched me. He has he to be prayed for as a way we could help him. Just out of the blue, a guy that looked like you described. With all those, that's, I don't know how he got, oh, his, his wife's on a vendor, she's a drug addict, and the four-year-old, her son is saying that when she drives daddy, she's all over the road. <laughs> you know, it's just an impossible situation. So we, we, we prayed for him, and he, he was happy about that. So. Thank you. You know, we always pray to be used by God, I think it's the riskiest prayer you can pray, is to say, use me. And yet when we are asked, we're so surprised by it. We're so surprised by it, especially by people that you wouldn't expect. 
I have kind of a funny thing after Frank's story, and that is after last night's second service, I went to my office to make my way home, and on my phone there were 46 texts, which is a lot for me. I don't get that many. And what was such a surprise to me was that our son in Maine watched online, watched the please service, and kept texting as things were happening, kind of a blow by blow. But my favorite is he, and I think this is the piercing of the veil, that at 31, on his own, a firefighter in Bar Harbor, Maine, um, that we won't see until tomorrow. We've sort of delayed our personal family celebration. Um, he went to church. He went to the little congregational church in Bar Harbor. <laughs> but um, the text to me was, Mom, has Supli ever considered a curling team? <laughs> you know that ice shaving? And it made me laugh because at the congregational church in Bar Harbor, Maine, they have a group of people who go to Belfast about once a month, and they, and they I don't know what you say, they curl or they do curling. <laughs> Just, I thought, I don't think we quite have the conditions for it, but... Um, it just gave me such joy that, you know, when you raise a kid and you don't know what they're going to do when they're on their own on Christmas Eve, they found, he found his way to a church and did that. Anyone else? Bill. Well, you know what? You have, to, you have to speak into this or the people at home, Merry Christmas, won't hear you. Um, I'm, I'm Bill Smith, and I, I usually sit over there and I... Judith's husband, and I try to be kind of unobtrusive because I'm Judith's husband, and who, who, and who wants a uh, who wants a pastor's spouse who has lots of opinions and is very loud. Uh, but after the end of the second service, uh, I, I was leaving, and this guy came up to me, this older gentleman, I don't think he's here, um, and said, "You know, I've I've met you before. Who you are?" And I I have this shtick. I say, "You know, I'm I'm the the pastor's husband. I'm Mr. Judith Brackett." And he said. He said, no, what is your name? <laughs> and I said, I said I'm, I'm Bill Smith. He said, I, welcome, and I hope you, you, you come here. And he, he sort of brought me back to, to earth, that this is, you know, life, life is not a comedy routine. He, he was reaching out to me, and I, I appreciated that. Thank you, thank you. Let's, um, friends, let's move now to a time of prayer, and then we have a final hymn already picked out that we'll sing. Um, Let's begin our prayer, if it's all right, if I have your permission, Dave. Um, a, very, a very eventful Christmas as um, Dave's wife, Donna, passed away just yesterday morning. So we'll have this time of prayer. I'll begin. And then if you can even add your own prayers, and sometimes there'll be silence, and sometimes there might be two people talking at once, we'll figure it out. And then I'll close us in prayer. I think it's one thing to hear a prayer and to speak a prayer, but we can also use the additional sensation of touch, to be touched during prayer. So I know Presbyterians don't do this very often, but if you are moved and you would come and put your hand on Dave, especially this day, um, as we pray. Let us pray. Holy One, vulnerable One, who came to earth as a baby, we lift to you our brother in Christ, Dave, who this day is the vulnerable one as he grieves this new news at the loss of his wife. We trust, Lord, that we only see in part, we see in a mirror dimly, but in the sadness of Donner's death, We rejoice that she now sees God face to face. 
She has no more pain. She has no more doctor's appointments. She has no more keeping track of her medications and her nutrition. And we trust, Lord, we have to trust that she is at peace. And so we ask you, Lord, that we help us to be the community of faith that Dave needs in these tender days. In these days when it doesn't make sense, when he doesn't know when the tears will come, surround him and his adult children and his entire family as they grieve the loss and, and live in a different way, in a way that they didn't intend, especially during this Christmas season. <clears throat> Holy Lord, we lift to you, John, who is also grieving the loss of his brother and all the feelings and all the grief and all the, all the memories that come flooding back, sometimes regret, sometimes a happy story, be with the Gravel family as they live these days in this new reality as well. And Holy Lord, hear us now in our silence and also in prayers that we speak aloud for others in our community or anything that we have on our hearts and minds this Christmas day, we bring them to you. For two-year-olds who come with their parents and sit in the back pew and watch all this going on with their wide eyes. We thank you, Lord, for the, for the lighthearted moments, for the silly sweaters, and especially Matt Brunner's. I think he gets the prize this morning. We pray, Lord, in gratitude for the many musicians at Supli who make this experience of being in this place lifted to new heights. The music they prepared last night and Susan's willingness to sit at the organ and whatever we call out, she's ready to play it. That's a gift, Lord, and we celebrate that. And we celebrate John's gift of playing the piano and often we don't need any words. We just need to listen to him play. We thank you, Lord, for the moments, for the moments that pierce the veil between light and darkness, between what we can see and hear and what is that we cannot see and hear, but we know most definitely is there, is present with us. Holy Lord, receive these prayers, and most of all, hear our overwhelming gratitude for the gift of your Son, who inverted power and might into love. Love is the way to go and to live our lives, and that love is more powerful than any weapon or any army. Holy Lord, what a gift. May the gift of your Son continue to transform us into the very people that you made us, you created us to be. In Jesus' name we pray, amen.
Hear now these words of sending. Let us now go to be the gift our neighbor needs, sharing God's blessings of love and grace, and running to tell the story we heard from the shepherds. Let us now go sharing the Spirit's peace with all people. And may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the sweet, sweet communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen.